Hi, Lisa DeHart here. I wanted to talk to you today about something that one of the viewers actually brought forward for me, which was how do you handle strong emotions in a coaching conversation when it comes up? And it's an interesting, it's a very interesting question to me because I think oftentimes there's, there's really multiple answers to how you do that. The first thing that really showed up for me when I was thinking about this particular topic was the work that we personally need to be doing as human beings around our own emotional states and being curious about our own emotional states because there's a, there can be really some transference and counter-transference with our clients when they have a really strong emotional response, whether it's really sadness or anger or fear. And we may want to really move the client away from that deeper, like exploring what's showing up in that deeper emotion, because we don't want to have them get overwhelmed in our coaching session and thinking to ourselves, you know, I have 30 or 50 or 60 minutes that I'm working with this person. I don't want them like losing their, you know, emotional self with me. And I don't know how to pack it all back in. And yet if we're uncomfortable with our own emotional extremes, what maybe, maybe extremes is a bit extreme of a word, but if we're not really comfortable with our own emotions, we can often really steer a client towards stepping past the exploration. And then the other piece of it, which is how do we as coaches really support the client to explore those emotions when they show up in a way that's ultimately useful is the other part of this, the other part that showed up for me as I was thinking about this. And so one of the things that I think about with my own clients and with myself is when a really strong emotion shows up, like you can really feel it. Clients will often hold their heart or put their hand to their throat, or they might even shake their hands. Like there's a strong emotion that's showing up. Instead of diving into it, like, what do you feel when you feel terrible? Um, which I, I hear is a coaching question that I hear in assessments quite often. We don't need to lead them towards that. I feel terrible when I feel terrible because they already know what that feeling is, but rather what is this emotion telling you in regard to this situation? What is this emotion trying to communicate to you about what's important to you as you move forward? And so we can use the emotion as a doorway into curiosity. As the coach, I don't need to take care of the emotion. I don't need to solve for the emotion and I don't need to step over the emotion. It's really my comfort with being with somebody who's in an emotional state, having you know, compassion for the experience that they're in the middle of, and yet still asking questions that help the client make sense of it in a way that's useful to the direction that they want to go. So an example of this would be, I was working with a client and the client said, was telling me this, this very toxic relationship that they were in and really the pain that they were feeling as they were talking about this and how they felt very stuck in the situation. And stuckness is one of those places where people can get really emotional because it is not such a great feeling. And one of the questions that I asked was something that I just said a moment ago. I said, you know, it, it seems to me, and I could be wrong, but it, it, there seems to be a lot of power and emotional energy that's showing up here. What does that tell you about what's important for you in this situation? And from that, the client really started off with, a, I don't know, and I allowed them to just sit with that and be silent. I was silent. And from the I don't know came, you know, it's telling me this. And by allowing the space for the client to explore what the emotion was trying to tell them or teach them 
or they needed to acknowledge. Um, that's the other place where emotion really shows up. Oftentimes we feel very strong emotions for things that have not been acknowledged, whether it's by other people or us ourselves. And so again, you know, as you, you know, as you're sharing this story, I'm experiencing a lot of, um, you know, the emotion that is surrounding it. And I'm wondering, is there something that needs to be acknowledged and named for you so that you can move forward? Again, we, we want to attach it to the direction they want to go, but we don't want to step over it. When clients bring a strong emotion into a coaching conversation, it's because they trust us. And so we don't want to step over that trust by going, ah, oh, I didn't hear the emotion. Let's just move on or trying to make it okay. Like sometimes emotion just is what it is and we feel it and it isn't that we need to have it made okay. What we really need to do is just acknowledge it so that we can then make our next step. So I hope this was useful in thinking about how you might handle strong emotions if they, if and when, because they will show up in your coaching conversations. Cheers. <music>